Welcome to Preaching That Matters. A place you can find apostolic Pentecostal preaching. A place where all generations can be fed with the Word of God. We hope you enjoy. Now, if you have your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 11, verse 20. This is the Word of God. Jesus said, If I with the finger of God cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come upon you. I'm speaking for a few minutes on the subject, the finger of God. It was so gracious of God to couch in human language expressions of himself so we could understand eternal truth. One such expression is our text. If I, by the finger of God, cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come upon you. Now, there are other similar expressions. The eyes of God, Psalms 33:18; The ears of God, Isaiah 59, 1. The feet of God, Isaiah 66, 1. The arm of God, Isaiah 59, 1. And the hand of God, Ecclesiastes 2 and verse 24. There's a word used by theologians and barely heard by most of us that explains expression of God in human terms. That word is anthropomorphism. And it means simply this, and I'm not quoting a Pentecostal pastor, I'm quoting a lexicographer who knows how to understand the English language. May I quote him now? Anthropomorphism means a speech used by writers of Scripture in which physical characteristics are attributed to God for the sake of illustrating an important point. For example, Scriptures sometimes speak of the face of God, the arm of God, the finger of God. And even though God is revealed to be spirit and not limited in time and space by the constraints of a physical body, Anthropomorphism essentially helps to make the otherwise abstract about God more concrete. End quote. Well, praise be to God. That's exactly what I have been preaching for the past 63 years. And now with that understanding in mind, I want to speak first of all that the finger of God is a symbol of degrees of power. The text teaches us that God gave Jesus Christ the Son the power to cast out devils, and Jesus called it the finger of God. What do I mean by degrees? Look at creation. Creation was possible by the very finger of God. Psalms 8.3 says, The creation is the work of thy fingers. Then for a lesser degree, we have the finger. And then for the more intense power, when God made man, it took more power than creating the heavens and the earth, because man was made by the hand of God. Genesis 2, 7, And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed in his nostrils a breath of life, and man became a living soul. Job 10 and verse 8 says, Thine hands hath made me and fashioned me. And the degree of this power is illustrated by this. You say, well, Pastor, I, I don't understand why a hand would have more power than fingers. Well, try to do your push-ups tomorrow on your fingers and not your hands, and you'll understand what I'm saying. But then when it came to the saving of a soul, the wrecking of the powers of hell by redeeming lost men and women, it took more than the power to create, more than the power to make man. The Bible says in Isaiah 59, 16, The Lord's own arm hath brought salvation. The fingers created, the hand made man, and the arm of the Lord at Calvary put the fires out in hell and redeemed lost and dying men, and that was God's greatest manifestation of power. Next, we find the finger of God at Sinai. 
In Exodus chapter 31, the tables of stone were written with the finger of God. Deuteronomy 9.10 says, And the Lord delivered unto me two tables of stone, written with the finger of God. Moses went to the top of Mount Sinai. Amidst lightning and fire and thunder, God handed down the Ten Commandments. What? The finger of God was writing on those pieces of stone. This was the law of God for Israel. And this law was fulfilled by Jesus. And when you keep His teachings, you not only keep the law, but you keep even more. But remember this. Jesus Christ scorned the law. This is a day of grace, He said. He scorned the law, but He crowned the principles of it. And He did this by the finger of God. Next, I see the finger of God in Babylon. Daniel 5.5, 5, Belshazzar had a feast. And he celebrated that feast for the thousand of his lords and ladies. And he desecrated the holy cups that were used in the service of God in the temple. My friends, Belshazzar crossed the line. Look at that wall. An armless hand with fingers writing upon the wall. Daniel 5.5 5 says, in the same hour came forth the finger of a man's hand and wrote on the plaster. And they called Daniel for the interpretation. And he said, it means, Mene, Mene, tackle you, parson. Number one, Belshazzar, the days of thy kingdom are numbered. Number two, thou art weighed in the balances and found wanting. And number three, the kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and to the Persians. That night, the Bible says, King Belshazzar was slain. And this was done because the Medes and Persians changed the course of the Euphrates River, crossed over the bed of it, and into the palace. And that night, Belshazzar, king of the Chaldeans, was slain. Daniel 5.31. God! is a God of mercy. But when you cross the line, judgment will come someday. A young lad was hit by a motorist many years ago. The driver of the car picked him up in the street, took him to the hospital, paid all the bills and apologized, sent flowers and gifts. The young man grew and became a criminal. The motorist was the judge. The young man committed a terrible crime, and when he was brought into court, he looked at the judge, and it was the man years ago who had saved his life. The young man thought, oh, I have it made now. That judge is the one that hit me with his car. But when the judge pronounced life in prison for his crime, the young man protested, but judge, you're the one that hit me with your car. How can you do this to me? He said, young man, then I was your Savior. Now I am your judge. Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world today. Then he will be your judge. Next, we find the finger of God in the temple at Jerusalem. John chapter 8, they had brought a woman caught in the very act of adultery. Moses' law commanded stoning, they said. They looked to Jesus and said, What say you? In John 8, 6, Jesus stooped down and with his finger put on the ground. Nobody knows exactly what he wrote, but he might have written, Thief! And the man that stole yesterday fled away. The next word could have been liar. The man who told a very bad, vicious lie yesterday ran away. He could have written adulterer, and the guilty man fled. And, convicted by their own conscience, they went out one by one, because Jesus had said, Let he that is without sin among you cast the first stone at her. And he told the woman, Go and sin no more. And as I speak to you tonight, 
I see the finger of God writing names in the book of life. It's in heaven. Luke 10, 19, and 20. Jesus had sent out the 70. They returned boasting that the devils were subject to them through the name of Jesus. Then Jesus used a Hebraism. He said to them, Rejoice not. That doesn't mean they shouldn't be happy, but don't limit your rejoicing to casting out devils. But rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Who wrote them? The finger of God. That's what I'm preaching about. God writes in the heart of man. A beautiful verse, Hebrews 8 and verse 10. I will put my laws in their minds and write them into their hearts. When you are saved and born again, Jesus Christ writes with the finger of God His name in your heart. Jesus said, I am come in my Father's name. John 5, 43. And Revelation 14, 1 says, The Father's name is in their foreheads. What does this say to you? God is saying, My name is on your heart. These are my children. I am their God. Hands out, devil. No man can pluck them out of my hand. John 10 and verse 28. They thought they had Jesus in a quandary about taxes. Luke 20, verses 24 and 25. Shall we give to Caesar? Jesus said, show me the coin whose image and superscription is on it. And they said, Caesar's. Then Jesus said, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. You belong to God. His name is written by the finger of God in your heart. That name is Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Oh, we used to sing a song. His name is engraved on my heart. And that's true because the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous runneth into it and are safe. And Acts 4.12 says, There is salvation in no other name given under heaven among men, whereby we must be saved. You have to be saved through the name of Jesus Christ. In Revelation 13, 17, the Antichrist, the mark of the beast system, the Bible says it will be this way. You will have to take the mark of the beast, or the name of the beast, or the number of the beast. But for those who have the name of Jesus written in their hearts, they could say like the Apostle Paul, who pulled back the folds of his garment and said, I bear in my body the marks of Jesus Christ. That's the only mark we will ever take. And he obtained a more excellent name, Hebrews 1 and verse 4. And what number? John saw them in Revelation 9, verse 9 of chapter 7. And he saw a multitude that no man can number. You may not be in the social register of this world, but if the name of Jesus has been written by the finger of God on your heart, and that happens when you're baptized into Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, you take his name. Thank God you are his child. Bless his name for that privilege. Now, quickly, the plagues against Pharaoh in Exodus chapter 8 are described very minutely. You can read them in the book of Exodus. Moses told Pharaoh that God said, Let my people go. Pharaoh said, No. So God sent judgments. Frogs, lice, flies, locusts, hail, boils. And came the Passover, the blood on the door, post save the firstborn, then the deliverance of Israel through the Red Sea, but the magicians, you remember, called Pharaoh and said, O oh, king, we have warned you. These plagues have come upon us. It is the finger of God. In this we see the finger of God pointing accurately, decisively, and specifically. 
And now I have to close my message on the finger of God. It seems to me tonight that any expression we can say to describe God is unworthy of Him, mainly because we can say it. Human language is so inadequate. The very word God is a theology within itself. One God, indivisible. Thus, we look for God where He can be found. Not in wild, stellar space. Not in the study of the construction of a bat's wing or an insect's eye. But God is in Christ, reconciling the world unto Himself. 1 Timothy 3.16 Voltaire said, If God does not exist, it would be necessary to invent Him. And so many do. In Africa, God is black. In Europe, God is white. In China, God is yellow. And on the reservation, God is red. We must remember, my friends, we don't create God. God created us. God is a spirit. And when you understand that and understand what I've preached tonight, you will see God grasping without human hands. You will see him seeing without human eyes, hasting without human feet, hearing without human ears, and touching without human fingers. Aristotle was a great Greek philosopher. Listen to his words. Quote, I fondly maintain that God is a bespeckled old Yahweh scratching his chin through a mountain of white beard, end quote. Now, me, he may have been a great, brilliant philosopher, but that is dumb with a capital D. Any Sunday school child knows better than that. My earnest prayer on Sunday Night Live tonight is that all of you will be saved. And if you are blessed to be in heaven, you will see but one eternal God. You will not see three people and allocate a certain time to worship each one. I love to listen to the old-fashioned revival hour of so many years ago. It was a broadcast featuring the ministry of Dr. Charles E. Fuller. It was a privilege to meet him as I visited the Long Beach Municipal Auditorium for one of his broadcasts. I can see him now standing before 5,000 people. It was during the dark days of World War II. I thrilled in my spirit to hear him say, quote, I ask you now, he says, in these dark and troubled days of this tragic war, look up to the Father, to the face of Jesus Christ. That's it. Find the Father in the face of Jesus Christ. Find the finger of God on the hand of our Savior. Then repent, be immersed in water in the name of Jesus, baptized into Christ, Romans 6, 3. You will be filled with this mighty Spirit, which is the spiritual manifestation of Jesus, the Holy Ghost, who said, I will not leave you comfortless, but I, the Comforter, will come to you. Ladies and gentlemen, I see it now. The finger of God pointing to Africa, South America, Canada, Russia, China, and all over America. He points the way to heaven. For he and he alone is the Savior of the world. Through Sunday Night Live, originating here in southwest Louisiana, then to a satellite 25,000 miles in space, the finger of God is pointing to you and to six billion other souls who breathe God's air and live on God's air. Sunday Night Live is produced and distributed by the Calvary Pentecostal Church Incorporated.
Please send your letters to Calvary or to Pastor Hicks, P.O. Box 715, De Quincy, Louisiana, 70633, United States of America. Or you may click on to our email with a message. Our email address is Calvary, S-N-L, that's one word, Calvary, S-N-L, at AOL. Won't you let us hear from you this week, wherever you are in this whole wide world. Remember that Jesus Christ loves you, and so do we. And now speaking for all the wonderful people who make Calvary their church home, this is Jim Armstrong thanking you for clicking on the Sunday Night Live. And may God bless you is our prayer.